everybody, Zach again, NewTutorial.com, coming in and making a video for you today. I want to go back and revisit this whole milk and dairy thing. A kid boiled in its mother's milk. It mentioned three times in your Torah of something not to do. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Um, and so everyone's talking about what does this mean? And the Jews for a long time have had this idea uh, based on some rabbi who was probably drunk years ago uh, said, well, we shouldn't eat cheeseburgers. You can't eat milk or meat and dairy together. Insanity. So let me say this and say this very clearly. There is no historical evidence, zero, none, nada, yet, negatory, nothing <laughs> that says that any ancient people who lived in Canaan used to boil a kid in its mother's milk and used it for some fertility right. There is none, zero, zilch, no evidence. <laughs> A special quick thank you out to Matt Napier who gave me all of the documentation on this, all of the information on this, and it's on my website. I put it on a page on my website so you can download the PDFs, you can look at the studies, you can look at the photography, and you can read how it was actually interpreted. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Back in the 1920s, they discovered all of these clay tablets, okay? And in the 1930s, they began the study of these clay tablets. And um, you don't actually study the tablets themselves because they're fragile. You might break them and then all of it's lost. What you do is you br carefully bring the clay tablets out of a vault and you use photography to take a picture of them and then you study the photos. That way you don't have to handle these fragile clay tablets and they go back into storage safely and they just stay there. And meanwhile, all of the doctors, I mean doctorates, you know, all these PhD people come in, all these pointy headed theologians come in and they basically study the, the pictures, the photography. Well, 1930s photography isn't that great. <laughs> all right, so they're looking at these photos taken with 1930s photography technology and they're not that great. And they come across one and they, it appears to say in this one line, line 14 of this one clay tablet that they see the word supposedly kid, milk, and boil. Kid, milk, and boil. And they jump to the conclusion that, oh, this is talking about that Bible verse, you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. And they're using, again, 1930s photography technology. Fast forward to the 1980s. They pull these clay tablets out again, okay? And they re-photograph them with 1980s photography, much better photography. And then they re-examine re all of these clay tablets, including the one that has this particular line 14 in it about milk, boil, and kid. And they're like, there's nothing about a kid in here. There's nothing about boil in here. There's nothing about a mother in here. All they have is um, milk. Nothing about boil, nothing about kid, nothing about mother, just milk. And what they can now translate as an herb such as maybe coriander or saffron. Milk and coriander. No mention of kid, no mention of, of, of mother, and no mention of boil. <laughs> it was a mistranslation and everyone wrongly jumped to the conclusion that it was talking about this Bible verse mentioned three times in the Bible, in the Torah. No, 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 no. There's no, again, there is no evidence anywhere that exists on planet Earth at this point that people of ancient Canaan used to boil a kid in its mother's milk. Zero, nada, none. And if you're basically repeating this information, you've, you're doing so incorrectly, not knowing about the, 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 all of the study that's happened since the 1980s that prove, prove this to be a mistranslation. Again, all the data, all the PDFs, all the photography is now on my website, newtutorial.com. You can download these PDFs directly from my server on my website, newtutorial.com. Link in the description below. Now, forget all that. Done. Moving on. The whole meat and dairy thing. Again, there's nowhere in your Bible where it talks about you not being able to eat meat with dairy. In fact, we have two examples, both Abraham and David of doing so, eating meat and dairy. You know, so this is clearly violating Deuteronomy 4, 2. You shall not add or take away from the Torah. You shall not add to the commandments I'm giving you. You shall not take away from the commandments I'm giving you. And here we have a clear, you know, example of, of people doing that. 
and 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 we have lots of people out there who are who are falling for this that this is some sort of important thing, some sort of important commandment, because some rabbi who must have been drunk or who knows, or maybe he was even joking, and some scribe with new, some new, I can picture some new scribe. Oh well, he, he's saying don't eat milk. It's crazy. It's insane. <laughs> you can have cheeseburgers, folks. You can have mac and cheese with you know beef mixed in with it or whatever, you know, chili mac. I don't, you can have this. It's okay. There's nothing in the Bible that says you can't eat meat, you know, meat and dairy together. This is something that's been completely invented and people are using that insane translation error from the 1930s as proof text that people used to do this. What this verse is saying is to not bring a kid to me as an offering that's still nursing from its mother. Do not bring it, do not eat animals that are still nursing from their mother. Do not eat animals that are still nursing from their mother. Wean them first. And well, people will quote that that verse in Leviticus 22, where it says, an animal can be under its mother for eight days and then it's you know acceptable for an offering. No, no, no. That's a mistranslation as well. It's saying you can. Use an, you, let the animal be away from under its mother for eight days, and then it's off, it's acceptable as an offering. Wean the animal first, because many of these people have never realized what what is all entailed when you take an animal from its mother at, before it's weaned. It screams bloody murder for like two or three days, or more. It takes time to wean an animal, and you're not going to be offering an animal that's screaming for mom as an offering or sacrifice, or nor should you use that. You should be, you know, weaning it first and then, you know, let it be an offering or let it be acceptable for food. Think of it this way. You're not going to take an animal that's only eight days old, seven days from under the mother, and then this tiny little animal that there's nothing to and use that as an offering. An offering, a sacrifice is something that you give up. It's something of value, but there's no value in an animal that's only eight days old. There's no value there. Even today at the sale barns, when you go, the longer you care for an animal, the more it's valued at the sale barns when you sell an animal. How old is it? How long have you been taking care of it? How much money and time do you have invested in that animal increases the price of that animal? And a sacrifice is something that's valuable to you. It's an, an offering is something that's valuable, something you're giving up. That's what sacrifice means, to give up something. You know, we've talked about this in other videos. So, this video in, Le in Leviticus 22 would not make sense if you're going to take an eight-day-old animal. There's nothing to an eight-day-old animal. There's nothing there. What is there to sacrifice? That's a wrong interpretation of that verse. What that verse is saying is, let the animal be away from under its mother for eight days or for seven days. And then on the eighth day, it's acceptable for a sacrifice. So that's like a, in that, in, in that reality, that's like a six-month-old animal, depending on wh when you nurse it. I mean, you can, oh, I mean, I guess you could do, three months, depending on sheep or goat, you know, or cow, but you know, six months, six months, it's still a young animal. It's, you know, approaching for a sheep sexual maturity at six months old. Um, and that, at that point, there's some, there's some weight to this animal. It's got some growth. It's a, it, it makes more sense that that would be a better offering than something that's eight days old when the thing, you know, barely weighs anything. It's nothing. And you're going to take an eight, day old animal who's been nursing and, and take that away from its mother, it's going to scream the entire time. And if most of you people have never raised animals, you have no knowledge of this, you don't know, you, you, you have no experience, it doesn't make sense any other way. So one thing, sure, shooting, there's nothing wrong with eating meat and dairy in your Bible. If someone's telling you that, they're breaking Deuteronomy 4 to and adding or taking away. The other thing that sure is shooting is there is no evidence of any Canaanite culture or any culture el elsewhere boiling a kid in its mother's milk for some fertility right. It's just not there. Okay. So what we have then is this issue with this verse in Leviticus 22 or, you know, this idea of boiling a kid in its mother's milk. What does it really mean? In my opinion, my opinion is that what this is saying is do not eat, do not bring offerings of animals that are still nursing from them, that are still in the milk of the mother, that are still nursing from the mom. That's what that means, in my opinion. Call me wrong, call me crazy, follow your Jewish traditions if you want to, but I'm not doing it. There's no way you're going to add and take, a, 
not break that commandment in Deuteronomy 4, 2 of adding and taking away to Torah if you're going to be telling people you can't eat cheeseburgers. <laughs> it just makes no sense. But, you know, that's much of the world today. Isn't it? it doesn't make any sense. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this clarifies some things. Again, thanks. A quick shout out to Matt Napier on giving me all that information. Um, it's on my website, newtotorah.com. Link in the description below. You can download all the PDFs. You can look at the photography. You can read the studies. It's all there. And um, I hope that will help clarify this. And we can finally get some of these people who are going around spreading this whole ancient Canaanite tradition, bullying a kid and smother. Just stop. Stop. Just stop. 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 All right. Leave it at that. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks.